Welcome to our video in which we explain and connect the two theories, urban commoning and Max Neves human needs. This video is part of the assignment for the course Rethinking Economy, made by Laura, Corinna and Franziska. Hey everyone, I just calculated my ecological footprint. Did you ever try to calculate yours? Yes, I did the other day and for me it was an eye-opener. I always thought I live quite sustainably, but after seeing the high impact my living situation and my traveling habits have on the planet, I was shocked. Yeah, me too. It also made me question what actually means living sustainably. When I looked into it more, I found the Sustainable Development Goals and learned that they were established by the United Nations as a guideline for participating nations to improve their policies and national actions in order to reach a more sustainable world. And the plan is made from 2015 to 2030. Their goal is to create a more livable world through collaboration of civil society and the public and private sectors. It also, Their goal is to improve hunger and poverty give access to basic services, such as clean water, make education and work available, support a more equal society and help us to rebalance with our ecosystem, as well as looking into the future by supporting innovation. I too find them interesting and I'm excited that 193 countries have joined, but I have also heard criticism about the introduction as they don't consider systemic dynamics but are rather a set challenge between countries to race for accomplishing set numbers. I think with the SDGs and their criticisms we can actually see how widespread this topic is. We are already exceeding four out of our nine planetary boundaries introduced by by scientist Rohan Rockström that state when a living space becomes uninhabitably for its inhabitants. There is the Stockholm Resilience Center who is looking into how the SDGs can help us to stay within these planetary boundaries. But what does that actually mean for our everyday life? I think we need to start seeing the world as an interconnected whole that has many connections and relationships that we might not see at first glance. Have you heard of systemic thinking, first introduced by Peter Sanger? He states that we need to connect the dots we see in the world and think in circular ways instead of seeing linear patterns. We should find solutions by emerging in a problem and connecting the parts to a systematic whole with its multiple and interconnected relationships. Only then do we look deeper and start to understand the true drivers of events. If we think in such an interconnected way, I also want to mention how in today's economy we always think about happiness being connected with an economy of growth as it provides security of income. But I have learned that we must question these numbers presented to us and question where our happiness actually comes from. I totally agree. All these theories made me rethink our systems and the economy we live in. I'm a passionate gardener myself, but as I live in the city, I haven't been able to plant and harvest anything for a while. When I first moved here, we had the park and some school classes used it for planting a small veggie garden, but now all green surfaces have turned into office buildings or production factories. It's very sad to see. But as I have learned to question things and look into topics, I have found that there are solutions and that initiatives can be taken. Absolutely. I heard just the other day, this concept of green spaces being sealed that you mentioned is much discussed. Also, here we see how important it is to question statements and actions and how they relate. And as you said, Corinna, rethink the origin of numbers and how they relate to each other. And how important it is to find a solution together by viewing a problem from various angles. Exactly. Have you two heard of communing? That might just be the solution for all these green spaces being taken by development. Yes, I have actually looked into this topic more. Let me show you what I found and how it is very much connected to our problem of urban gardening and our everyday needs and even our happiness mentioned earlier. In order to explain the term commoning, it has to be clarified what commons actually are. 
Commons are defined as living social system through which people address their shared problems in self-organized ways. Though the term is sometimes used in a wrong way, namely to describe unowned things such as oceans, space, moon or collectively owned resources such as water, forests and land. Now that it has been clarified what commons are, we can go deeper into the concept of commoning. The definition of commoning is the following. The exploratory process which, by which people devise and enact situation-specific system of provisioning and peer governance as part of a larger process of unfolding humanity. Peer governance is that part of commoning by which people make decisions, set boundaries, enforce rules and deal with conflicts, both within commons and among different commons. The term commons was already explained on the previous slide. To make it clearer, we provide a more detailed definition here. Commons are complex adaptive living processes that generate tangible and intangible wealth through which people address their shared needs with minimal or no reliance on markets. All these definitions might seem complicated in the beginning. Nonetheless, they are necessary to explain for our example of urban commoning and they will also get clearer when explaining them through this example. To connect all these terms, I end the section with the statement, there is no commons without commoning and there is no commoning without peer governance. According to Max Neef, there are nine fundamental human needs that are constant through all human cultures and across historical time periods. It changes only in the way these needs are satisfied. The following are the nine fundamental human needs. The first one is subsistence, meaning food, water, shelter. Then protection, meaning a safe place to live, social security. Participation, being part of decisions that affect our life. Idleness, free time to relax, affection, friends and love. Then understanding, meaning learning and, med and meditating. Creation, like cooking, designing, inventing. Identity, a sense of belonging and knowing oneself. And freedom, being able to choose how we live our lives. Max Neef differentiates between different kind of satisfier to satisfy the nine human needs. Some satisfy only one need at once. Synergetic satisfiers satisfy several needs at once. Destroyers satisfy one need while preventing us from satisfying other needs. Pseudo satisfiers create a false sense of a certain need. He also organizes them in four categories depending on how we satisfy our needs. Those four categories are being, having, doing, interacting. And to answer the question in the title, how can this help us to be sustainable? Max Neef's human needs provide a framework to organize our thinking and we can examine products, services and activities according to the nine human needs and associate satisfiers. The framework also provides a different perspective and replaces unsustainable practices. It helps us to find ways to satisfy needs with fewer resources. Drawing the connection between these two theories is simple. Commoning can be seen as a sustainable satisfier. Sustainable satisfiers can be made to synergetic satisfiers, 
We are now going to find out which of the nine human needs can be satisfied through urban commoning. So now I can see the connection with urban gardening and the challenges economic development brings along. Let me show you a concept called urban commoning. People like me who live in urban areas are often faced with several problems such as a minimized living space or the loss of recreational areas and many people here criticize the rising privatization of public goods. In order to tackle these problems, citizens all around the world have come up with small but effective methods. Urban commoning. The concept can be defined as the making of alternative public space and or social relations outside the market-based economy. It can take on many various forms in urban space, such as community building, community gardens, or even an even an alternative economic production within the city. The most popular form of urban commoning, however, is urban gardening and farming. The aim is to let the population decide for itself how to use its resources and to fulfill needs that have been neglected by the city councils. However, the whole concept is also based on some basic rules. For example, it has to be defined who has access to urban commoning areas or which parts of the city can be transformed into those areas. Over the past few years, the phenomenon of urban commoning and the creation of commons in cities has gained much popularity all over the world as people's needs and expectations have changed, working together towards facing the universal problems and issues. So, to make this whole concept more tangible, I would like to share two examples of urban commoning with you, which I really like. Since 2012, an area in Paris has been transformed into an urban commoning and gardening space. More than 400 people live there and they are independently tending the garden and are responsible for its well-being. The area contains a micro-farm and a recycling facility, both also operated by the inhabitants. A different variation of urban commoning has been developed in Madrid, named El Campo de Zebeta. Architects wanted to counteract the gentrification of the old town and created a space designed and maintained by the residents themselves. Together with the residents, the architects created a cultural space for all ages. However, this example also portrays the difficulties of, help of urban commoning. The organizers feel like it is almost impossible to maintain an urban commoning space like that one without the help of the city council. So this shows the need to already include urban commoning spaces while, uh, while planning cities. Finally, it's time to come back to the question of which human needs can be fulfilled by urban commoning spaces. As we have already heard, commoning can be defined as a sustainable satisfier which can be transformed into synergetic satisfiers based on Max Neve's framework. Let's now apply this model to the presented urban commoning spaces in Paris and Madrid. Frankly, in the context of urban gardening or farming, most human needs can be satisfied and are hence seen as synergetic satisfiers as they complement and influence each other. We identified the following needs that can easily be satisfied one way or another within a concept. Subsistence, protection, affection, understanding, idleness, creation, identity and freedom. Each of these needs can be satisfied as they can be classified into one of the four existential categories that were introduced earlier on. For example, the need of affection is satisfied by creating friendships in the urban gardening space and by building a relationship with nature, while at the same time it satisfies other needs such as the need of understanding by educating oneself on nature and the processes within. The only need that might not completely be fulfilled and can therefore be seen as a pseudo-satisfier is the need of participation. Even though actions such as work or interaction within a community are met, urban commoning spaces might exclude certain social groups or people from participating simply by being exclusive spaces within a bigger community, namely the city. The same satisfiers and also pseudo-satisfier can be adapted to the example in Madrid, even though different aspects of the needs are satisfied. For example, the need of affection is satisfied by creating a space of togetherness and it is also and it also satisfies the need of creation by being productive together and by building and designing a common space. Isn't it interesting how all is connected and how looking at a problem with a certain framework can help to understand a problem more holistically? Yes, I agree. And I just want to mention that for city planning, it is actually very important to integrate more commoning spaces and make them available to a large group of residents, such as common gardening spaces, because it also gives residents back their voice, which is an important politi political tool 
and also a big social aspect for urban gardening. Exactly. This could also be a solution to the mentioned issues before. I guess concluding, we can say that we have learned to look at the interconnectedness of our world. Rethinking is the way. Thank you for this great conversation and these interesting insights, guys.